Hello and welcome to another review at Frontline Model Hobbies. Today we've got this fantastic Border Models 35th Junkers JU87 G1 G2 Stuka. I must admit I've been waiting for this one for a very long time to come out. And as you can see, stunning, stunning box art. Um, typical Stuka stance, especially the G coming and striking enemy troops on the ground. Absolutely stunning. So let's have a look inside the box. So everything's packaged all individually as you can see. Must admit I have had a sneaky peek in this. Everything's all individually wrapped. And it must admit quite big sprues as you go through. And then at the bottom, I don't know if this is a special edition version, I think it is. But you've got an individual pilot figure, some photo etched, decals and the instruction booklet. So if you bear with me two seconds, let's have a look in the instructions. Okay, it's time for the instructions. And that is my really bad French accent. So anyway, um, nice front artwork that you normally get on the box. Um, I'll be putting that on the wall, I think. So yeah. So straight over the page, you've got your sprue call outs and whatever you've got in the box. And then straight over into the build. So... Typically for an aircraft build, you'd go straight into the uh, cockpit, but in this case, you're doing the engine. So you've got all the pieces that goes in there. It looks quite comprehensive as it goes together. You've got your firewall, your oil cooler, and bits and bobs. So to be honest with you, some wiring will make it look pretty nice. Moving straight over then, um, you're putting the engine into the front no section. Now... It'd be nice to see if you could put that on and have that as a separate fit so it looks like the aircraft's getting ready for an engine change or whatever. you. So it would be nice to do that if you could. Then moving over to the cockpit and as I'm going to say later on, and I'm going to say this quite a lot, it does look reminiscent to the Hazigawa kit um, as it goes together. And then it looks even more so when you see the two sidewalls going into the fuselage and the main cockpit section going in. So yeah, it looks straightforward and looks simple. Moving on straight over, you're moving into the wings, step six, and you're putting all the bits and bobs. You've got no gun feed stuff into there. I very much doubt it carried machine guns in there. I think it just carried the cans because of the weight. So you've got no machine guns, no nothing in there. Um, Obviously, you've got the dive window there as well. I don't think it ever carried that. I think it was blanked off. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. And then that's the other option uh, for the extended wing on this section here. Moving on, you've got the canopies going together. So you've got options of different types of canopies for whatever era of G Stuka that you want to do. And all the framing going into that. The front main canopy with the armoured glass going on. So you've got two different types of framing on there. Machine gun going together. And then the horizontal stabilisers going together. Nice to have or, um, the elevators as a separate fit. Very nice to have that. And then step nine. Literally this is page nine, step nine. And you're putting everything together. So it is going to be quite a very, very quick build. Um... I obviously won't put the canopies on at this stage. Um, and then, step 10, page 10, is you're doing the cannons, fitting all them together. Looks quite comprehensive as it goes together. Very nicely done. And then you've got your wheels and your wheel spats. Like I'm saying, going to say later, you can modify this to make it D. I'll explain that later. And then... Step 11, page 11, is you're putting the wheels on and you're putting the guns on already. Jesus. And then, step 12, uh, sorry, step 11, page 12, that is, you're putting the canopies on. So you've got your three different options and then you've got your armour plate for the later version. Simples. And then, you've got your paint call-out guide. So you've got your 1943 Rudel. And then also you've got 1944 Rudel, which is the one that kind of everybody goes for, and it's the one that 
I've done in 48th in the past and it's one I'll definitely go for again. So that is that. And obviously the spook call outs are in MIG ammo. So that is that. Right, on to the decals. So I've never really used border model decals, but I've never really heard a problem in the past. Um, that being said, you do get a full set of swastikas in this one, they're not halves, and you get the instrument dials, which is quite nice. Um, the spinner, what I've done in the past, is if you put some tape on there, so obviously you use the decals around it, or cut it out, or do whatever you want, what I tend to do is try and keep it on the sheet, and then I put some masking tape on there, and then cut round it, and then you can use that. Paint it obviously white, uh, the spinner, paint it white, put the decal on, or the mask over the top, in the shape of the decal, and then paint it black or LM70, depending on what, what colours you need to do. So, the other decals, quite nice, in register, and pretty good. You do get a small set of photo etched, get it the right way around, uh, nothing really mad to call out on there, so nice to have some grills and that. And last but not least is you get a pilot figure in a jiffy bag, which I've opened up, it weren't like that. So this pilot figure, as you come to expect from a resin figure, is very nicely detailed. Um, next to no cleanup needed on him. Uh, the details are very crisp and very nice. So, yeah. Um, if you want to model him sort of 1945 when he was captured, um, sort of cut his leg off. Just saying. Um, his head, I must admit, is an uncanny likeness of him. They've, they've got him not far off. Um, and to be honest with you, likenesses as likenesses go, I don't think he's too bad. I do like the hat on there. And like any good German, it's slightly skew So yeah. And also the hands. So obviously you get two hands, obviously. And again, very nice detail on the again not next to no clean up and it's just a straight fit on there so yeah that is the pilot figure all righty then so sprue a obviously comprises the fuselage main halves the nose main halves the ailerons and the flaps and so on and so forth so looking at the details look very crisp look pretty good um the panel lining might be a bit too deep um but to be fair if you look at the real one which i have seen in hendon museum the panel lining is all over the place so to be honest with you i'll let it off for that um you've got some raised rivets there as you can see at the back and you've got some recessed ones uh, the recessed ones i've noticed don't go all the way around the bottom half of the front nose section so i think that actually does so you might have to rivet that in but have a look at your references um, the fuselage halves again very similar in detail as you can see all the way down very crisp nice panel lining and recessed rivets and again the back pretty good and it, it's nice to have some raised rivets on the bottom um, you won't have to sand that line off the bottom there um, when you join the two halves of the fuselage because I think um, there's a panel line down there anyway, so you should get away with that. Um, so yeah, very nice. To compare it to size, so I'm building the 32nd one, and this is the Hazy R one, so you compare the details between the two, and you can see that the Border Model one is very nice compared to this one, but this one is still nice, don't get me wrong, but you can see the difference in size. Um, obviously, the top one being 32nd and the bottom one being 35th. That being said, it's still going to be a big aircraft when it's done. Um, and you're still going to notice it's a Stuka anyway. So yeah, pretty pretty good on that. So moving on, sprue B. Obviously your wings and stuff. 
and again following on with the detail that you've seen on the fuselage very very similar it's very consistent as it goes along from from top to bottom and that's the other side and then obviously the top again very similar as it goes along as you can see on there some nice raised detail on that there um, so obviously you've got two halves of the rudder and two halves of the horizontal stabiliser on that one. Okay, so moving on to sprue C, and obviously comprises the cockpit, the lower half of the fuselage stroke wing, and a few other bits and bobs machine gun there. Um, it's nice to have the machine gun that's got actually drilled out the end, so you don't have to do that. And obviously the cockpit detail, again, is very similar to the Azigawa one in the way it goes together and the detail itself front firewall some nice little bits of detail but it's very sharp all spot on um injection pin marks on the back nothing really to call out but most of that well nearly all that is going to be out of the way with the exception of this bit here which has got two injection pin marks which you might need to get out but other than that a very nice sprue, no flash anywhere, looks pretty good. Now moving on to sprue D, and obviously you've got your engine, your front spinner and the props. It's nice to actually have the props where they've got no other um, sprue gate anywhere, it's just on the bottom, so very little in the way of cleanup needed for that. And again, the actual engine mounts look pretty good and on the back of them you've got which i noticed earlier one ejection pin mark but well, apart from that but to be fair you're not going to really see that because it's going to be right up against the engine the engine itself obviously with the azigawa one you don't get an engine very simplistic as it goes together so it it room for improvement i think especially when you put some wiring on there i think that'll look pretty good Last for the major sprues, you've got sprue E. Um, you've got your all your cannons on there, you've got everything, you've got your sparks, your wheels and your bombs and stuff like that, so most of the armament is on there. Um, looking at the spats, I must admit, pretty nicely detailed. Um, and obviously you've got full forks there for the main landing gear, of which I'll show you what you can do with that you can do something different and then obviously you've got your wheel uh, smaller wheels shall i say you've got your bombs there so if you want to bomb it up and then obviously you've got your cannons which if i can show you are actually drilled out which is pretty nice um would it be nice to have some for the price anyway some metal barrels um it wouldn't have cost them much more to put a little barrel in there for master set or whatever you but either or not too bad really to be honest with you and obviously these are your cannon pods with the two halves of each going together for the main cannon so yeah pretty nice on that sprue going together and obviously one thing i forgot to mention was that you get flat spots on the wheels so yeah well, pretty good okay so to explain myself a bit better i've got this very tatty looking old book that i've had for quite a while um, just to explain what I was on about um, and as you can see from these three schemes at the top the landing gear spat is all in one piece now if you look at this one this one's eastern front late 1941 so towards the end of the first uh, year of the attack on uh, Russia and the landing gear spat is all of one piece now as they went along especially when it snowed they realized that this area was filling up full of snow and dirt and crap so they did that so obviously this is bulgaria markings and you got romania markings there but the germans did exactly the same thing they removed the bottom half of the spat just to stop the shit and crud collecting in there so this is what i meant by you can do a d version because they're both the same and you can do that version as well which is quite cool so last sprue is sprue H, which 
comprises all the actuators and stuff as you can see very nicely detailed very crisp as they go through obviously you've got your bomb release mechanism there um, so you can actually do a D because obviously the D is the G um, vice versa you've got your aerial there which is very very thin as you can see very very thin and you've got all your other lumps and bumps on there so I must admit very nicely detailed and no flash on there whatsoever okay time for the canopies so I've dragged the camera in so I can show you a bit closer for these but obviously you've got your main canopy sections there for the pilot so you've got your front section on this piece here and on there so you've got two duplicates and you've got three main canopy sections that goes over the pilot's head now I don't know if you're going to be able to see this but I've got some quite bad distortion in that front piece of canopy can you see them there Let's see if the camera picks this out so both pieces come on focus so both pieces have got some quite bad distortion in there. Um, I know the canopies are quite uh, they're quite complex to go together. They're a complex shape and the one piece. So kudos to them being able to do that, but still they're, they're ever so slightly distorted, uh, which is a shame. And there's just a few little tiny bits of scratches, not much from the actual bag when they were in there. Um, that being said, the JU87 Stuka in 1945, I don't think the canopies are going to be in pristine condition, to be honest with you. So, yeah, I can kind of forgive it for that, to be honest with you. Okay, so final sprue is the rear gunner's position glass parts. And there's nowhere near the distortion as what there is for the pilot's windscreen. Um, yeah, not too bad. I've got a mark there. Don't know if it's a... I'm not quite sure what it is, to be honest with you. Um, but there is a mark there. So I'm hoping it comes out. And then obviously all the flat pieces which are there. And they've, they're quite badly distorted, to be honest with you. There's, there's a mark in there or what have you. Uh, to be honest with you, there's my fingerprint on it. But, to be fair, I would have liked better, especially for the money. But other than that, it's a piece of glass, so you can't go far wrong. So that's the end of that. Okay, that is the review of the Border Models 135th scale Stuka. And I don't know if I've said this before, but... We've been waiting for one thirty fifth aircraft to come out. Whether you know the armor and the figure guys go to one thirty second, they have been doing. But it's nice to have the aircraft come to thirty fifth as well because you've got so many, so much scope to do so many different dioramas. You've got figures, you've got vehicles that you can put around this thing now. Um, whether border models will continue this trend, I don't know. But I'd like to see them do some. RAF and US Air Force versions as well because again there's so many different figures and vehicles that you can put to that. So must admit I do like the aircraft. The price is probably a bit overpriced. I probably won't pay $79.99 for it. Um, if you find them cheaper then hey ho go and get them. So anyway I just want to say thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. Cheerio.